Security clerk indicated to the court that she had received a voice message from regular juror number 62. And the message was that juror number 62 had to attend to an emergency and had to leave the country today. As a result, juror number 62 has to be replaced out of the alternate pool. The court has discussed this with counsel and has indicated that it would have Madam Clerk draw the name of an alternate to replace juror number 62. Now, if counsel wishes, they can inspect the names of the jurors who are in the alternate pool who have been included in that draw, if you wish to do that. Attorney Felson, Attorney Sean Owen. Do you wish to inspect the names in the draw? No, Your Honor, I'd be familiar with those names. Thank you. Well, Madam Clerk, you can draw a name and just indicate uh, the alternate juror's number, but not the name. Three nine nine. Thank you. So alternate juror three nine nine is now a member of the regular jury. Are we ready to proceed? Um, can we just approach for a moment? Yes.
If you can please raise your right hand, thank you. Do you solemnly swear or solemnly and sincerely affirm, as the case may be, that you will, without respect of any persons or favor of any person, decide this case between the state of Connecticut and the defendant based on the evidence given in court and on the laws of this state, as explained by the judge, that you will not talk to each other about this case until instructed to do so, that you will listen to and consider what the other jurors have to say in deliberations about this case, that you will not speak to anyone else or any allow anyone else to speak to you about this case until you have been discharged by the court, and that when you reach a decision, you will not disclose the decision until it is announced in court. So help you God or upon penalty of perjury? I do. Thank you. Thank you. And you may return. Is the state ready to proceed with its witnesses today? Yes, Judge. I believe he's under cross-examination by Attorney Schoenberg. Thank you. And we can bring the jury out, please. Would counsel stipulate, please? Yes, Judge. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, we continue uh, this morning with the state's witness under cross-examination. You can bring in Detective Kimball. May be seated, Detective Campbell. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Attorney Schumer. You know, in looking things over over the weekend, I realized um, the uh, recall that weather.us map that I showed you. Yes. I realized it had central time on there. I don't know if you noticed that. So um, I took the liberty of going back to uh, weather.us to get Eastern time for 11.58, 11.59 on the evening of May 23rd. I'm going to put that up. Um, I understand that there's no objection to um, Exhibit L. That's for 12.59? Yes. For 1 a.m.? Judge, I have no objection to Defense L. Defense L admitted as a full exhibit. And if we could just put that screen on for a second, all right? So if you look at uh, storm tracking from weather.us and you see that the red lines indicate the direction of storms, you see that? Yes. All right. And you see, if you look, uh, you see the uh, map we see up on the, on the wall there, you have the Connecticut border way up at the top there. Yes. And you see the uh, storms heading south, correct? According to those red lines, the moving direction. You see down at the bottom? Yes. And uh, red means heavy storms, correct? Yes. And um, if I could just have the... Um, just point it at the screen for a second. And you see that... Um, West Hartford is right here, and Farmington is right about here, correct? Yes. You had also told us that you used um, weather underground for that time to determine that there weren't any storms in the area of Farmington, West Hartford, correct? 
So I use weather underground for 1 o'clock, 12.59, to determine that there was, well, to find out if there was precipitation. On and May 24th, between <coughs> uh, 12 and 1, correct? Correct, and this is 11, 50, Spirit 11.58. Well, this is May 23rd, right? Correct. <laughs> All right, so it's, it's 12, just before midnight on the 24th, correct? Correct. And you said that the weather underground that you used was um, from Brainerd Airport, right? Yes. Now, Brainerd Airport is the old city airport in Hartford along the Connecticut River, right? Yes. Now, Bradley Airport is the big Connecticut airport up in uh, Windsor Locks, isn't that right? Yes. And the Bradley Airport is closer to this location of Fort Jefferson Crossing than Brainerd Airport in on the Hartford East Hartford line, right? I believe so. I'm not 100% sure of the that I'm not that familiar with that area. You did not look at weather underground for Windsor Locks where Bradley International Airport is, did you? <clears throat> Trying to remember. I am not sure which I looked at, to be honest with you, whether it was Bradley or Brainerd. All right. Um, do you recall, though, whether you looked at uh, the one from Bradley? Would looking at a document perhaps refresh your recollection? Yes. Show it to you first. See if this might refresh your recollection. I realize it's little, but you have glasses on. Yeah. You can read it all right. Yes, it does reflect, refresh okay. my recollection. So, in looking at, you know, that at Bradley Airport, there were thunderstorms in the area, including heavy thunderstorms that early morning of between 12 and 1 a.m., right? Can I look at that one more time? Sure. Thank you. It is small. It is small. Had a chance, and I'll mark this for ID, please. That would be M. M as in here, ID. So, having reviewed that, does that help refresh your recollection that between 12 and 1, there were in the area of winds of Bradley International Airport heavy thunderstorm report? There was a spike in the precipitation, yes. Right around that time, correct? Correct. And just the kind of thing maybe a 12 year old might fr get frightened of at. Uh, at 12 or 1 in the morning, being a check judge. Well, sustain. Each time that you met with um, Michelle Traconis, um, you had gathered, you continued to gather information concerning your investigation, correct? Correct. When they say you, I don't mean just you, I mean entire squads and teams of investigators, right? That's correct. You were working in conjunction with the New Canaan Police Department, right? Right, correct. You were able to call on uh, troopers and detectives from the Hartford Central District Major Crime Squad, correct? Correct. You were working with members of the Western District Major Crime Squad from um, 
Litchfield, right? Correct. Troop G in Bridgeport? Yes. Perhaps even uh, Troop A in, in Southbury? Yes. As well as road, road troopers from the various barracks, correct? Correct. They assisted throughout this investigation, right? Yes. Gathering information? Yes. Working with other officers? Yes. Collecting information from various sources, right? Correct. You had, at the time you were talking with Mr. Conus, on the first occasion in June 2nd of 2019, you had at that point already the benefit of some phone records, right? Yes. You had Mr. Dulos's phone records, right? We had Mr. Dulos's phone, the Cellbrite report from his physical handset, yes. And Cellbrite is a, is, a, is a program, right? Isn't that what it, that is? You're calling it Cellbrite. We're not talking about Cellbrite as a, like, Celebrate. It's a computer program, right? Yes. And it's used to be able to open up and look at things that are on a phone, a cell phone, right? Yes. You can look at phone calls, right? Yes. If they exist still, text messages. Yes. Internet searches. Yes. Photographs that have been taken with that device. Yes. Photographs that may have been downloaded to that device that someone else sends. Yes. Emails. Yes. As well as uh, geolocation, that is GPS location for various points where that phone uh, activates, correct? Yes. In addition, by the time you were talking with Ms. Traconis, you had some video surveillance, some of which we've already seen, correct? Yes. Some of it was from the cameras you pointed out and talked about from Albany Avenue in Hartford, right? Yes. Some were ring doorbell uh, and other home surveillance devices that residents had, correct? So you say when we spoke to her, I'm assuming this is the second June, the first interview. Yeah. Um, I, we eventually definitely got ring doorbell. I'm not sure on which specific date we got some of those videos. So I don't know if we had them at that point, Councilor. You also had had some interviews by that point, correct? Oh, yes. Especially, I had already asked you, and I'm not going to get back into it, but members of the, um, of the Farber family, correct? Yes. You'd also had obtained some forensic information besides the cell phone, right? Yes. You had some lab work done, right? Yes. You had some initial reports about DNA, correct? Correct. And you had assembled all of that information through the various members of law enforcement in order to know what you were going to ask Ms. Traconis on June 2nd, and again on June 6th, right? We formulated a game plan for, for questioning her, yes. That's what you're asking. Right. You, in other words, you actually came up with some kind of a I won't call it a flow chart, you had points you wanted to cover, isn't that right? Fair to say, yes. You would talk to the state's attorney's office as well, right? Yes. You did not share the information, oh, let me rephrase that, you didn't share all of the information that you had with Ms. Traconis, did you, when you talked to her? No. You did share some information, correct? Yes. And some of the information that you shared with her turned out to be inaccurate. Isn't that true? Fair to say, yes. As a detective, we started to get into this, but I wanted to explore this a little more. You have actually been trained in investigative techniques, right? Yes. At least when dealing with adult suspects, adult witnesses, you are allowed to uh, make up stuff, aren't you? To them. Yes. You're allowed to provide false information as a means of trying to elicit information from that individual, right? Yes, correct. So, for example, uh, it's not in this case, but if, um, if you had told a suspect that someone else was confessing against them, 
you would be hoping that would elicit that person to say, oh, it wasn't me, I was just the standby, it was that other person. Isn't that a regular technique that's used? Yes. And sometimes if you have two people in custody at the same time, you have one detective saying the same thing to that other person, seeing who's going to talk first, right? Yep, yes. Now, as I understand it, at the, at the same time that um, when Ms. Draconis was placed in custody, Mr. Dulos was at the station, the New Canaan Police Station, for some of that same time, correct? Yes, that's correct. He, he was then transported elsewhere after processing, right? He yes. didn't stay there. That's correct. But Ms. Draconis stayed at the New Canaan Police Station, right? <clears throat> yes. She was kept in a cell overnight. Yes. And for the next morning. Yes. Until the next afternoon. Yes. When you told Michelle Traconis that you had information that there were 30 stops along Albany Avenue disposing of garbage, you have conceded in a question to Mr. McGinnis that that was inaccurate, right? It, was not, it wasn't a true statement, was it? It was inaccurate, you're correct. It was an inaccurate statement. Someone had told you that it was 30, or did you just, was that just a technique to come up with a, a number? No, I was provided information that it was that but, but you don't know who it was that told you that? No, I don't recall specifically. But you did actually swear in an affidavit that it was 30 stops, didn't you? Yes. So you at least thought it enough to swear to something under oath, even though it turned out to be untrue, right? That's correct. And you later corrected that in a supplemental report, didn't you? Yes, I did. You also told Ms. Traconis that you knew that Fotis Doulos was down in New Canaan in the morning of May 24th, 2019. Do you remember saying that in that uh, first video, June 2nd? Trying to remember whether I said that or whether we said that we both believe she was not being honest with us. Well, I want to be more specific. Didn't you say you knew where he was because of, quote, science, unquote, that he was not in, not in uh, Farmington, but in New Canaan? The word science, both you and Detective Clavy use that, right? Just object, Judge. Ground. I don't believe that the detective said that. I think it's a mischaracterization. Well, the question is essentially, well, it's a leading question. You said that essentially science showed certain things. And so what is the objection? Well, if I can just have a moment, Attorney Schoenhorn. Thank you. I thought I had clarified it was if, if it wasn't you, it was, it was Detective Clabby that said it. I believe you both said it, but at least in your presence, Detective Clabby used that line, didn't isn't that true? I remember Detective Clabby using that. Okay. I don't remember using it personally. Fair enough. Did Detective Clabby when he was taught did did you discuss this with Detective Clabby before he said that? Discuss his use of the word science? Yeah. Not specifically the use of the word science, no. Did you understand him, though, to mean the DNA exam that had been done by the lab at that point? Which DNA done? The state forensic lab DNA results down in New Canaan that suggested there was some DNA a yeah, small amount of DNA found in the, on the uh, faucet and maybe a doorknob. Yes. That, that's what you were understanding what was being suggested to Ms. Uh, Draconis at that moment, correct? That's correct. Now, there were no fingerprints of Mr. Dulos down inside that uh, house were there found? No. In fact, the only fingerprints you were aware of turned out to belong to one of the New Canaan police officers that went in there, right? That's correct.
Michelle Traconis talked to you on that first date for at least two, two and a half hours, correct? Correct, yes. She tried to explain things to you, right? She spoke with us and she had, a, she had an account of the day. She had an account and she had at least an explanation for some of her, her activities, right? Yes. I noticed from the video that often either you or Detective Clabby would interrupt her mid-sentence. You, did you notice that? At times, yes. Now, is that part of the interrogation technique to sort of interrupt and redirect? Yes. You also um, told her that some <coughs> things were, quote, not important, unquote, that she was trying to explain to you. Isn't that true? specific words I'm trying to recollect, but there were things that she was telling us that were of lesser importance. I'm referring specifically to the uh, license plates that were recovered from the sewer drain. Okay. Do you remember Mr. Conus telling you she didn't know anything about those license plates or what was in the FedEx envelope and she had never seen that Suburban? Do you remember that conversation? Yes. yes. You remember saying to her, or maybe it was Detective Clabby, well, that's not important, that's not relevant. I don't remember that. Was it also part of your training to have two separate detectives asking questions and peppering a person with questions at the same time? And I, I don't mean at the same time, but I mean one after another. Objection to the form, Judge Peppering. Well, the court is going to uh, sustain the objection, but that is not foreclosing the line that would lead to cross-examination techniques that could amount to what counsel describes as peppering. Okay. I, I will ask a question a different way. Was it part of your training as a technique to have more than one officer directing questions one after another to a single person who's being interrogated? That's not the best way to conduct an investigation or an interview. It isn't the best way, is it? If you're trying to elicit information, it's not the best way, right? Correct. But there's nothing wrong with it, right? Correct. You were still trying to get at information that maybe would lead to saving Jennifer Dulos, right, at this point? We were trying to locate, yes, Jennifer. And, and I just want to be clear about one specific point. When you told Michelle Traconis that you had proof or evidence that Fotis Dulos was not home at 6.40 in the morning, as she said, that was a interrogation technique question, statement, wasn't it? We had his DNA on a faucet but you, at the crime scene. Right, but so we you, you know a lot about transfer DNA. You've learned about transfer DNA, right? Yeah. Yes. You, knew, you knew it was a minor, not a major amount of the combined DNA on that faucet, right? Subject, Judge. I think it's hearsay. Well, the question now goes to this witness's knowledge about transfer DNA and amounts. And so the question is, you know about, and the answer can the no, I don't know about, or yes, I do. So the court's going to overrule the objection. Just re, uh, re ask sure. the question, Counselor. Well, you you understood that there was there was a, there was a minor and a major contributor that is more than one person's DNA mixed together on that faucet, right? You knew that at that point. I understood that there was more than one person mixed together. You also knew when you're questioning Michelle Traconis at that point 
that um, you knew that Photostoulis had been there at a picnic out in the, in the backyard a day and a half earlier than May 24th, right? On the 22nd. Outside of the house, yes. Right, but there was food, right? You knew that. Mm -hmm. that yes. There was yes. silverware and plates and all that stuff, right? Yes. And you were aware that for part of that time, Michelle, um, Jennifer Dulos and Fotis Dulos had interacted during that uh, event at the, at the house down in New Canaan, right? Yes. You also told um, Michelle Traconis that she would have to know what uh, happened to Jennifer Dulos, right? Yes. Was that because she was living with Fotis Dulos that you said that? Partially. Was it because she was dating him at the time? Partially. Do you think that uh, from what you had already told us about what you had learned about Fotis Dulos that he was finally revealing his true self to this girlfriend? I'm just going to object, Judge. Ground. Speculation. Form. I'm asking what he believed and thought it's during the questioning. It's also irrelevant. Well, if the court is to credit counsel's representation, the line of the questioning is, did you believe that Michelle Traconis either knew where Otis Dulos was or knew more about what had happened to Jennifer Dulos than she was telling them? You believe that in part because this is how the court understands the testimony. One, she was Fotis Dulos's girlfriend. Two, she was dating Fotis Dulos, living at his house. And now the court understands this is number three. So again, the court understands this line to explore the reasons that Detective Kimball would say certain things to Michelle Traconis. Overruled. Counselor, could you just repeat yes. the question, Did you please? believe that Mr. Dulles was finally going to reveal his true self to this particular girlfriend? I'm not sure what you mean by that question. Well, the, the fact that you asked her she would nest, she would she had to know what had happened. Was it in part because you believed that Dulos would have revealed his true self and what he was really like and is suddenly be uh, open with this particular girlfriend? We believed, given the totality of their relationship, that she would know more than she was giving us, more information than she was providing us. Okay, fair, fair enough. But she kept telling you that she did not know, didn't she? She did. She told you she didn't know what Fotis Dulles was up to that day, correct? Yes. She told you she didn't even know he had gone to a party, picnic party, in the backyard of Jennifer Dulos' house two days earlier, right? That's correct. She told you this at least, as I counted, at least six times. Isn't that right? I didn't count them, but that sounds accurate. Does sound accurate? Does sound accurate. Michelle just didn't tell you that she didn't know. She offered to help you search, didn't she? In those words, she did, yes. Well, she did more than just Word. Didn't she say she would dig holes? Isn't that one of the things she, she said? She did say that, yes. And she would trek through the woods, right? In the interview, yes. yes. She drew some pictures for you, which I believe we see on the screen where you're on June 6th, where she's showing you some pictures, right? Yes. You looked at those pictures, didn't you? Yes. And I'm going to again ask that um, exhibit. Um, L, if I could have the, uh, 
images, please. The drawings. <coughs> I'm just going to ask what it, this is on exhibit L, but okay. So this is labeled 2581 on exhibit L, and I'm just going to uh, have you. You can see it in front of you there, right? Yes, I can. So this show. This is a drawing that uh, Mr. Connor said she drew, right? And gave to you, right? Yes. It shows um, Jefferson Crossing, right? Correct. It shows um, Eli Road here. Yes. It shows Old Mountain Road, right? Yes. And she showed, she drew pictures of the various properties in the immediate area that Mr. Dulos owned through the Ford Group, correct? Correct. She even talked about properties uh, that she referred to as Mr. Godfrey, that is property he wanted to develop, isn't that right, on Old Mountain Road down the street here? Yes. And then uh, this is Mountain Spring Road here, correct? Yes. So um, other than the short, jo there's a jog from Eli Road to uh, Mountain Spring Road, there's a stop sign here and there's a stop sign there, correct? I believe so, yes. And it's just maybe about 50 feet from Eli Road to Mountain Road, right? I don't know the footage, but... You, you were only there a couple of times, I take it? Correct. I'm not okay. that familiar with it. But then she also talked about you pass another uh, through road called Talcott. Talcott Notch. It's actually Notch. Talcott Notch Road, Talcott right? Talcott Notch Road, correct. And then she drew all these other properties, lots and, and houses that he either owned or was building on along Mountain Spring Road, right? Correct. And it was all just down, shall we say, downhill from Fort Jefferson Crossing, right? Yes. And if I could have the other image, please. She also drew another picture. This one is labeled. get the right ID on these. Oh, got it. It's just page two of 215. All right. She drew pictures showing the uh, property along the, uh, well, the, it's called, it's like the reservoir of the water company property, correct? MDC, correct. Yeah, MDC for the people that live down this part of the state means Metropolitan District Commission, right? Correct. They're the quasi-public water utility company that owns thousands of acres of land Over up 6, in 000, Hartford and Litchfield counties, right? Yes. And that's the source of a multiple reservoirs that feed the entire Hartford area, right? Correct. So she drew these pictures showing where there were fields and where she drove her motocross uh, motorcycles with FOTUS, right? Yes. And sometimes with Pavel Gumieni, correct? Yes. She showed you all of this and gave you these pictures, right? Yes, she did. Now, this picture, page two, she offered to walk the, ne the next couple of days with her attorney and, po and state police detectives going through where they went through the woods, right? Yes. In fact, we show her saying, well, she needs a different pair of shoes because she can't get back into her house to get hiking boots, because it's muddy and rocky, right? Didn't she say that? Well, she said she needed other shoes, and she wanted to get, get other shoes. And separately, she said that the train was a lot of logs, a lot of rocks. Yes. And she also uh, showed you that she had on an ankle bracelet, so it was very <clears> difficult <throat> to even get shoes that she could wear to go hike through there, right? Yes. But she actually did, didn't she? Went, went in the woods, didn't she? She did with her attorney, who wasn't too happy, as we can see in that uh, video, right? Yes, correct. He had to rearrange his court schedule, right? Yes. I'll but know. Attorney Bowman went with her, didn't he? Yes. And at so. least one, if not more, detectives, right? Yes. 
She also agreed that she would help look any t anywhere, didn't she, that you wanted her to. During which interview? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to recollect. There were a lot of things said in each of the interviews. Right, between the first and the second, maybe more in the second interview. I think it's fair to say she would, yes. And she said she'd go any time, right? Yes. Said, in fact, she said, uh, as often as you want, if you know, it takes a year. Didn't she say words to that effect? I remember the mention of the word year. I'm not sure the context of it. During these interviews that you had with her, let's start with June 2nd. Did she ever say, no, I want to stop, I'm done? No. You were aware that it got very hot in that room at the uh, New Canaan police station, right? Yes. And at one point you hear that you had to take a break because it had gotten so hot and muggy and, and stifling in that room, right? We took a break and we mentioned that it was warm. I'm not sure we took the break because of the temperature, but it was mentioned that the environment in the room was mentioned, definitely. You, you heard Mr. Bowman get up and go, oh, it's hot. Remember him yes, saying I that, remember. right? And you heard Ms. Tricona say, I'm getting dizzy, right? I don't remember that. Um, I don't remember her saying that. Okay. So if it's on the video, it's on the video. If but it's, the point being, she didn't say, I'm done, I can't do this anymore. You went back and there was at least some more inter interrogation after that, right? Yes. Questioning. Yes. Right? You asked her about Fotis Dulos um, cro close cropping his hair. Is that right? Yes. And yeah. she's the one who volunteered to you that she's the one who had shaved his head at his request, right? Yes. She also told you he had done it before for water skiing, right? He had done it before in 2017, yes. Well, he'd done it uh, 2017, he'd done it in 2018 too, right? I don't remember 2018. I know that she said he had done it at least once before, and I think she said 2017. Until she told you she was the one who shaved his head, you didn't know that, did you? No, we did not. There's no video of that, right? Of the shaving of the head? No. There's no surveillance of that showing her with a razor or an electric razor or a straight razor or anything, right? Doing that. Surve uh, video surveillance? No. <clears throat> Now, you were aware by this time that when she told you he did it for water skiing, you knew that Fotos Dulos was a competitive water skier, right? Yes. That he actually competed around the world, right? Yes. As did Michelle, right? You knew that as well. Yes. She also told you that in the video, in the interview, that there were pictures of him on Instagram from prior years with his, you know, water skiing with his head shaved, right? Again, I don't specifically remember her saying that. I know did he you, had an Instagram account. Did you go through the account and look for those kind of pictures or not? I did. I don't, I don't remember seeing him with his head shaven. Okay. All right. There are a number of questions about what Fotis did the night before the 24th. Do you remember those questions in the interrogation? Yes. Michelle told you there had been a dinner party, didn't she? Yes. She named the people who were at that party, didn't she? <clears throat> yes. She told you about Stefan Reich, right? Correct. And his girlfriend, Beth Johnson, right? Yes. You, she told you that uh, Stefan Reich was one of 
Mr. Dulos's or the four group real estate agents, right? With Coldwell Banker, yes. What's that? With Coldwell Banker, yes. Yes, but w one of the agents that worked on, on marketing the properties and the houses that he owned and built. Yes. He, she also told you about Robert Hutch Haynes, right? Yes. And his wife, Aaron, spelled, I guess it's spelled A-A-R-O-N, not E-R-I-N, even though it's, it was his, his uh, spouse, female spouse, right? Correct. You checked, as a result of what she said to you, you did check these things out to confirm them, right? Yes. And they were confirmed, weren't they? It's going to object, Your Honor, calls for hearsay. Well, the question is essentially, you confirmed them. That's the question, overruled. Right? They were confirmed by other, yes, they were confirmed. Okay. You also checked in with, she told you about who his closest friends were, is that right? Yes. Some of them cooperated with you, right? <coughs> yes. Some did not, right? That's correct. Some refused to talk to you of his friends. That's correct. Michelle told you that she saw attorney Kent Mawinney in the office after she got back from taking her daughter to school on the 24th, didn't she? Yes. She saw him up in the office, correct? 